welcome to my Hordes edition of the Box to Battle. This is my 25 point Troll Blood army I'm putting together for my game against Dave at Mini Wargaming. So, this is episode 2 Painting the Impaler. And this is what we're looking at here is my test model. This is uh, one of the impalers that comes in the uh, box set for Troll Bloods. I've worked on this over the last month here and here, here and there, just picking it up when I had some time. And I'm ready to paint the second one in that box, and I figured I'd go through the steps I used to, to get this result. So we'll start off by looking at the metallics. And what I use for this is the Model Air Vallejo's Gun and Rust. Now you could use any metallics, any silver or, or rusty metallic, like the tin bits or bulk on metal from Citadel. The reason I like the Vallejo stuff is that the, the pigments are really finely ground and so they are uh, they spread a lot easier I find. Um, it's also nice and thin too. So for this just uh, I do normal dry brushing, just take a bit, remove the excess. I didn't remove all of it like I would normally because I want to be able to get fairly good coverage quickly. And so what I do is I'll do the rust there to begin with and just go straight in back straight into the metallic the silver and just basically keep going back and forth until I get the results I like. And this is, I mean, something you can play with. This is a personal thing too, right? But for me, I like this. I like this technique just because it gives me a, that weathered, sort of beaten up look fairly quickly and easily, and and without having that consistency. If you actually painted the metal, I mean, the metal on, and then uh, and then had to use something like the the washes. Now I will wash this afterwards as well to add a little bit to it, and I'll do some highlighting with uh, with probably the gun and maybe like the aluminum or the chrome from the Vallejo Model Air line. But to begin with, it just gives you a nice beaten up uh, look with not a lot of effort, which since I'm trying to paint 25 points and well, I think just, I think I have a week and a bit now before uh, before this has to go. So it was the 27th and today's the 10th, so or the 11th, so or is it 12th? All right. oh, weekends, I never look at the calendar. So you see here, just going over all the metallic, there's a fair bit of uh, metallic. And I'll, certain things where I want the more bronzy or, or non-silver, I'll go back over again, but... This is just a quick, and also you can see the uh, the backpack fell off. That's why the, the the you're seeing more of the the back there, or the unpainted or unprimed metal. And again, this is just a personal. Go for what looks good for you as well. The one thing I found with is I I, I primed with the Vallejo. Um, primer with my airbrush, but I found that I got I had forgotten using doing models of this, the metal models. I haven't done a lot of metal models for a while, and I was a little bit too aggressive with my dry brushing and actually managed to pull, peel off a little bit of the uh, the primer off of the the metal, which is, I hadn't run into that for a long time. And comment below if you have uh, if you've had success with this this type of paint or if you prefer the Games Workshop. I know that I re remember seeing a review recently talking about the the new dry brushing uh, material for Games Workshop is that thicker uh, material rather than, than than thinner. So if you've had any kind of uh, experience with that, let me let comment below and let us know what you think. I haven't had a chance to try it out yet just because I've got so much of the metallic of the the, the old line and the, the Vallejo line. I haven't really had a reason to go out and buy anything else new. And to speed up time, I've also done the same thing with my Axer. So I use the same technique here on the Axer. There's more metallic on him as well, um, but you can see the same sort of idea where it gives you that uh, quick, beaten, weathered look. And I'm going to go back with some bronze over there and on the top of the axe. So now we're on to part two, the red. So I'm going to start off with the Citadel Foundation Paint Mechrite Red and just use the I started off with only one drop of water, but I discovered soon off that I need a little bit better. So I've, I found lately I've been I've been thinning my paints typically a, a one to one ratio. It usually takes a little a couple more, it takes another coat or a little bit more to get good clean coverage. But I find it saves me having to uh, one keep replenishing my palette and two it, it uh, I find it just flows better. Than I'm using the not army builder army painter sorry brush the I'm just using the regiment brush there. And I find that I can hold, it can hold a fair bit of paint in it, so I'm a big fan of painting for a while and not having to go back and replenish the brush too often. Although at 300 speed, it does seem like I'm doing that fairly, fairly regularly. 
but you'll see here with this I'm going to go back and uh, I'm going to have to go you can still see some of the black coming the primer coming through on the on the bottom piece but with the thinner paint I find I just have a little bit more control that was one of the issues I ran into when I was a, a earlier painter novice painter just wasn't realizing that was the better route to go I mean I've been painting this stuff on and off since the uh, er, late 80s early 90s and found that uh, I never really got good until recently because I've been able to see some of what other people are doing and not just reading it about it in, in the magazines and in the books actually having some other video documentary or not documentaries tutorials coming on and, and assisting so that's why I figured I'd do this is just to sort of give back I've learned a lot over the last say year or two um, from these kind of videos I just want to share my thoughts and from going from what I would consider a not a very good painter at all to being at least being able to do some good tabletop stuff so that's why I'm doing this uh, doing these videos so once you've got you know, again focus on getting a nice clean or nice uh, even coverage because it's really going to help in the, for the rest of it I'm still a stickler for painting some of the stuff you won't see on the table I have to get out of that habit because you don't necessarily see, you're not going to see the underneath there now eventually I know this red I'm going to do is a plaid but for I think for the case with the game against Dave it's just going to stick to the to the the solid color so next I'm going to do a wash of the uh, Delvin mud I'm not sure what the new line version new version is so here you want to stick I'm just basically using this to call, pick out a lot of the the details and the seams and such so I generally try to pr push the the ink into where where I want it so I'll start in because uh, it also it adds a bit of tone to the or shade to the uh, to the, uh, the, the the paint as well. So generally, as I, once you get it on there, I try to push it to where I want it down to the seams, like there near the top, and then in the stitching and near the bottom. I made it a little bit dirtier on the bottom because I actually want to uh, add a little bit of a dirty or dusty effect on the on there as well. So. I wouldn't necessarily, if this was going to be a cleaner looking model, I wouldn't necessarily have gone this deep. I would have maybe either thinned the wash down or gone with a, a sepia or a red instead of the uh, the Delvin mud, but because it's uh, it's going to be a, a darker look, I went for the uh, went for full on un, un, uh, diluted wash. Another one thing I find with this is you often sometimes have to. Uh, give it some time to dry. I get impatient and pull out a little hair, hair dryer I picked up at, uh, I think I picked it up at Zeller's here during their blowout for like four bucks or six bucks or something like that. So it comes in extremely handy when you want to dry something quickly. You just throw it and bring in the hair dryer and, and do it. So so next up we're going to go back and do another coat of the Mechrite Red. And again, this time I'm going to make sure it's thinned at a good one-to-one. -one. And I use, dis dis not, instead of using distilled water, I just use water for my uh, dehumidifier. And so basically what I'm going to do is go over the, the top points here. Now because it's thinner, um, it's going to take some of the colors from underneath as well. So I'm basically going over all the areas where I didn't want it as dark and muddy, but leaving the, the pooling around the, like the rivets that are going to be metallic and some of the folds of the fabric. And generally when I, when I do my shading, I try to figure out the light source is going to be above. I've seen some cases where people do their light shading, or the light source, it's like it's a unifying source from rather than one light source they do it just they highlight everything no matter where it is and I try to do it to the point where I'm working from above I think I'll eventually I'll start doing it from the side if there's a light source on the model but for this I just did uh, I did it like the light is coming from above and you can see here I'm following the top of the seams and avoiding the uh, where the, the buttons and the, the stitching is and you'll find it goes on, it looks like it's a kind of bright, but once it actually dries, it'll dry closer to the color, or the darker color. It's the one thing I, I find, even when I'm doing this video, knowing that it's supposed to be um, a little bit lighter, it seemed a little bit lighter, too light, and then when it dries, you see that it uh, you know, it, it seems to blend in a little bit better because it's, it's thinned down as much. So once you've covered off all the areas where the... Getting, leaving just the, the ink and the recesses. So the next color I used was the Citadel Base, the Fist on Red. Now this, as you can see, is a little bit brighter. Again, I'm trying to do a one-to-one -one ratio there, so it's a little bit thinner. And because I don't want that sharp of a, a change, I'll take a little bit of the Mechrite Red and then a little bit of the uh, Mephiston Red to sort of get a halfway point. And sort of, I'm doing repeating what I did before. I'm just trying to focus on the top top areas, 
use the top of the, the clothing, the folds. And again, it looks really bright red there. And I'm, I'm, as I was filming this, I'm thinking, wow, that looks way too bright. But because we've thinned it, it's going to become a little bit translucent. And once it dries, it's going to pick up the colors beneath it, which is really has helps. And as you can see now, even now, it's beginning to dry a little bit. Or sorry, that's the tone of the, the reds getting reducing. And do the same thing on the bottom, just focusing towards the top, top of the seams, and then the top, and just getting that spot between the rope and the, uh, the barrel, and a little bit of the bottom because I figure the the lights want to catch the bottom of it as well. focus on the seams where you don't see, or the folds of the clothing, because you don't really see those on the top of the model. Comment below if you, I just, one of the things I was concerned about is, because I'm still trying to get used to painting with, well, trying to say, on a, in a camera uh, frame, let me know if I'm moving the, the, the miniature too much. I think uh, there's, I mean, in some cases you have to move it around just so you can get it to, to where you need to paint. At the same time, if it's too much, let me know. Also, the other thing is I've, I've got this at 300 speed because it, quite frankly, I think would have been about 45 minutes to an hour if I did it at regular speed. And I'm not sure if it's that fascinating to go at full speed or at regular speed <laughs> rather than full at this uh, 300 speed. So um, just comment if I'm going too fast or if it needs to be zoomed in a little bit because to me, from what from where I'm watching it, where I'm doing the narration, it's just about a, a very small screen and within uh, the Adobe Premiere program I'm using to edit. But overall, you can see there's now a, a gradient. And I'm also, at this point, I realize I should be doing the edges as well. So I've gone back and done a few of those edges. And for my final highlight, I use the Formula P3, the Kedar base red. And again, one to one ratio. And again, what I'm taking here is I'm taking the Mephiston, and then I'm taking some of the, uh, the, the red and, and using that as a medium highlight. Oh, sorry, as a, as a high, a top highlight. No, no, I guess it's a medium highlight because I'm going to use the just the the Kedor base red afterwards. I like the P3 paints because they're they use liquid pigments rather than uh, powder pigments, so you get a little bit of a different uh, different look to them as well. I find they're a little bit thicker, so you absolutely at least the ones I have, you you absolutely have to thin them. There's no no choice of that. But I guess they're not as, uh, at least where I am locally, I, there's no one who, who stocks them, unfortunately. I have uh, where my uh, my former gaming store, they they do stock all the P3 stuff. So whenever I head out to, to the other side of Toronto, I always wind up grabbing at least a couple paints. So I've got a good chunk of the, the Kador and the, that's right, Kador, the, um, the Signar and the Trollblood paints. And you're basically looking until you're happy with the results. Again, we're looking for tabletop quality. So... That's the end of part two. If I had gone into the rest of the model, I think this would have been an hour, hour and a half video and I want to make sure there's value in this. Let me know, comment below if you found this was of usefulness. Should I script them so there's less awing and humming? Because I'm trying to fill up a lot of the time that I'm seeing there. So um, click like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Follow us on Death Head Dice or follow Death Head Dice on Twitter as we've got a feed going and I post photos and what I'm working on. And again, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions for improvements, throw them in the section below. And we'll hopefully we should see another video in this series within the next day or two. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.